Father Fabio Baggio he is a Scalabrinian priest and he has been in Melbourne and been talking at the Bishop Joe Greck Memorial Colloquium. It's an annual event. This was the eighth of these events. And for, firstly, Father Fabio, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Moshe. And, and, and lovely that you could make some time for us. Really interesting topic and very topical yeah. around migrants and refugees. Just give our viewers a little understanding of what role you play in terms of this, and then we'll talk a little bit more detail. Yeah, yeah. I have to say that uh, in uh, January 2017, uh, Pope Francis, uh, showing all the concerns for migrants and refugees, which has been quite clear since the beginning of the, pontif on the pontificate, he, he wanted also to have a specific section dealing with migrant and refugee issues. Right, yes. Uh, when he established um, the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, in the same motto proprio, which is a document, a foundation of a Dicastery, he said, I want a section just uh, dealing with migrant and refugee issues. Yes. And this section, for the time being, will be directed by me. Mm -hmm. So it is a very special section, yes, I would yes. say. Uh, and uh, the presence of the Pope is effective presence. Um, um, Father Michael and myself are the two undersecretary of, yes. of a section. Jesuit, Father Michael, myself, Scalabrinian, so both religious, with uh, different experiences. Father Michael is a refugee himself. Yes. I have been ministering to migrants uh, for the past years since my, uh, um, my old priestly ordination in Latin America and the Philippines, Asia and Latin America. And uh, we, uh, we convey, uh, we try to use, make good use of our experiences in the, uh, now directing this section uh, together with the Pope, of course. So we are reporting to him every month and mm. we are receiving instructions. And among the instructions that we have received in the real beginning was also um, a, a specific role in promoting the Holy See view for the Global Compact. Which is? Ah, well, yeah, you know what, we have to, to explain first what the Global Compacts are, you know? Right. So, starting from uh, 2016, mm -hmm. there was a declaration called New York Declaration. The international community, meaning all the governments of the world, sit it down and said, we should have a common agreement on policies dealing with migrants and refugees. And refugees. So, okay. wow. We thought about a very interesting uh, agreement will maybe end in, in a convention, something like that. Well, it is not a convention. They call it compacts, like pacts, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. And they say not one, but two. We want one for refugees yes. and the other one for safe, orderly and regular migration. I so see. for migrants. Yeah. This is the idea that they had. And it was very interesting to see that in the division of task, they also thought about two different processes. So the first one, the one of refugee, was entrusted to UNHCR, which is a UN agency for refugees. Yeah. And they started working with the government in consultation in order to draft, uh, to prepare a draft, to draft a document. And I assume this is under a United Nations auspices? Yes, exactly. I see. Exactly. Yeah. And the second one was uh, part of a, a general secretariat work of the General Secretary uh, of the United Nations and uh, he set up a commission and he was uh, entrusted to very expert people this commission and they uh, wanted to have a consultation and negotiation process mm -hmm. which is different from the other one which was just consultation I see. consultation negotiation including also civil society groups which has been also consulted and sometimes they also offer there now the Holy See is an observer to the United Nations. So uh, Pope Francis thought that we have something to say and say why not preparing a position paper of the Holy See. On, on both topics? Yeah, on both topics. Yeah. First we thought about having two different uh, documents, one for the refugees and one for migrants. Uh, and then we decided after consulting local churches and Catholic NGOs that uh, it was important to stress the, all the, the common elements 
on, of the two global compacts, meaning together we have a lot of uh, migration flows which are characterized by uh, what we call normally a mixed presence of the forced migrant and uh, uh, labor migrants. Yes, yeah. yes, voluntary migrants. Yeah, exactly. Like. Yeah. So uh, it is quite difficult and it is becoming more and more difficult to discriminate one from, for the, uh, from the others, especially from the point of view of the social doctrine of the church where we included also poverty mm. as one mm. of the causes forcing migration, which is not part of the conventions of the UN Convention. Mm. Poverty is not understood as a forcing cause for migration. But from our perspective, yes. It probably should be. Yeah, it should yeah. be, especially when we talk about extreme poverty. Yes. But we also expand the, the understanding. And within the idea of a dicastery, we can also say that the lack, the absence of opportunity of integral human development for the person, personal fulfillment, mm. feeling fulfillment, is also a compelling cause to migrate. Because if my country, my place, is not offering to me the possibility of a fulfilling what is a God's design for me, it's also a good reason to, to think about migrating. Yeah, to yes. go elsewhere where yes. such opportunities are offered. And it is a compelling cause, as we said. So there is a, 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 a reflection, an ongoing reflection within the Catholic Church and within the social doctrine of the Church regarding what we call the root causes of migration, which is expanding the idea of forced migration. So we wanted to stress that point. We wanted to stress the, the idea of the mixed flows, uh, which are, I would say, the normal flows that we are assisting to today. And on the other part also to say that whatever a common framework is going to be drafted by the two different commissions mm. should be harmonized. Yes. It cannot be just thinking about refugee, refugees and migrants. It would be silly to have two silos. Yes. They exactly. are very interlinked. They have to be interlinked. Yes. Yes. They have to be interconnected as everything is interconnected today. Particularly we are talking about the same countries on one side and the other, mm. origin, transit and destination countries. So also, it will be difficult to have different policies when you're talking about. But of course, in full respect of international law, which is uh, particularly dealing with the refugees, we talk about the Geneva Convention of, of 1951, yes. uh, which is giving them an international protection, which is not given to everyone. So in full respect of what is... Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, I would say making a point, stressing a point, mm. which is very important for us. By July 2017, the document was prepared in consultation with the Catholic NGOs and the representative of local churches. So that's a bit over a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And in September, we were ready after the approval of Pope Francis to deliver, to hand over the document to the two commissions. So the UNHCR in Geneva and the other commission in New York, mm. the one on migrants. And uh, well, they started considering the document as a very important document. And I have to say something which in this case is quite, quite important. We didn't think that we are beginning, but actually our document was the first one which was presented. Ah, okay. And normally the first document which is presented become also a, a, a source of reaction. Mm. So Almost a, a groundwork document. Yeah, yes, they, yes. They, they started reacting to the document. Mm. You know, and every reaction was at least considering all the things that we stressed. We were quite pleased to see, and our permanent observers in Geneva and New York has done a wonderful work in dialogue with all the governments, either in consultation or negotiation, in order to see all the points that what we stressed in the document, which was called 20 action points for the global compacts, to see them reflected in the draft of the two global compacts. So 20 action points, and we'll get to those in a moment. We're talking to Father Fabio Baggio, who presented this week in Melbourne at the Joe Greck Memorial Colloquium. Now, the words refugees and migration here in Australia, as in many other countries, are real hot words. They're, yeah. you know, they're very much buzzwords. They're very important in people's thinking in terms of right now. So since you got that very strong reaction to your 20 action points, what has been the result and where are we at right now? Yeah, uh, the 20 action points has been drafted according to the four verbs 
uh, Pope Francis stressed as uh, the summary of the pastoral care of migrants. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, well to welcome, to protect, to promote, and to integrate. These four verbs are, according to Pope Francis, the real synthesis, if we want, the four key elements uh, for pastoral care. But they're also the, the four key elements for any action, mm. uh, assisting migrants or welcoming migrants, protecting migrants and refugees as well, and integrating them at the, the end of the society. So give our viewers a few specific parts of those, so they can yeah. get a feel for what's in the document. In the document, we stress a lot that welcoming would start in open, opening the doors sure. and not closing the doors. Yes. So if we want to have safe migration, if we want to have orderly migration, if we want to have regular migration, we should prepare a path for safe, orderly and regular migration. Yes. Closing the doors, according to our documents, and we stress it, will just make the game easy for what we call the traffickers, and those who are preparing the mm. regular path yep. and proposing other kind of channels of migration to people. Of course, very well paid, a part of the, what we call the migration mafia, mm -hmm. which is just going around. So instead of uh, closing the door, we need, of course, have a, a regularized path, but we have to open the door. And I would say uh, the door should be opened not just by some countries, but all the countries with different responsibilities. So what do you say to those European countries who really haven't been opening the doors? Yeah, well, uh, you know that mm, I would say that the church, the local church and the church in Europe is quite, quite, quite outspoken and the Pope himself, mm. I have to say. Just say that uh, any kind of, of attitude which should be uh, uh, adapted by the government should be a welcoming attitude up to the point that uh, I can give, I can open, I can provide for. And this is a real question of not being selfish, but being of course mm -hmm. sensible and in solidarity with those who are just escaping. And particularly to the refugees knocking the door who had not decided at all to leave their countries, they had to leave. We're talking about the Syrian crisis yes. and many other African countries are really proved by the conflicts and a long standing war, we're talking about 28, 30 years of war in the, within the country. So uh, in this case, the generosity should be shown uh, not only because of a Christian uh, background, mm -hmm. which is also present in the case of Europe, but also be shown because there are possibility of a sharing responsibilities. And if you leave just, and the Pope was very outspoken and say, just a couple of countries in charge of all those arriving, probably negative reaction will be shown. And this is what actually is, uh, I would say worrisome on one side when we see some xenophob xenophobic or discriminative attitude, which mm. has been uh, showed and by some part of the population. And, and sadly they do exist. Here in Australia, of course, Father Fabio, we don't really get a gold medal for our efforts with refugees. Um, what would you say to that and what would be the world view of, uh, I think, Australia's very disappointing effort with refugees? I have to say that, uh, well, the Australian church has been quite outspoken mm. also in many of the issues coming out with statement and the migrant and refugee section is always supporting what mm. are the statement of the local church. But at the same time, it is, a, a, I would say, a general call, which is coming in the four verbs, the one of welcoming, protecting, promoting, and integrating, which is also true for Australia. So always recalling that we can do more of what we are doing. But now, let me say that uh, despite all the dialogues, the ongoing dialogues, uh, the example which was given by Australia in the past is a very remarkable example. We, we, we should just go in around and ask the people. I think that most of the people in Australia has a, a different uh, ethnic background. Mm -hmm. They came from somewhere. Of course. And they can tell us about the good experience, yes. the good welcoming experience that they have and how they were really uh, able to contribute to the development of this country. We are in Melbourne, we have to say, you know, this, this city, which is, if, if I'm not wrong, the second most uh, uh, wonderful city to be lived, to live in, uh, in the world. And yes, and, and it's been number one for seven years, yeah, yeah. and this year number two. Uh, 
we have to remember that the city was built out of migration. Spot on. Yeah. Absolutely spot and on. And also out of refugees, mm. many refugees which has been welcomed. We think that this, this example can be also to, to get as a, 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 a leading example also in the international community. It's just a question of uh, uh, reframing whatever uh, has not been uh, good in the past, mm. maybe in the past years, the recent years, and to see how we can do it better. And I do believe that the local church has a lot of recommendation which can be, be, can be taken by, in this case, uh, the, the national leaders and see how Australia can be, again, and this uh, wonderful continent, it's not just a country, no? mm. like a continent, it's an island, mm, correct. receiving people and giving the future to those who are lacking opportunity for the future. So you had the chance to speak at the Joe Greg Memorial Colloquium. Mm -hmm. What was your final view in terms of where this process is now and might move to? And what have you found to be the reaction here in Melbourne? Yeah, I have to say that uh, sometimes all the fears that we have towards migrants and refugees, it just we, we, we think we are alone welcoming mm. them or assisting them. That's not really the case. I do believe that the global compacts that we discussed just uh, in the colloquium are telling us that there is a new wave, there is a new way of understanding, there is a new trend which is coming, which is a common framework. Uh, policies which are agreed upon by the international community yes, yes. and which are giving us the idea that more countries now are responsible, not only few, are left with Honestly speaking, very few has been the countries of resettlement of refugees, Australia among them. You have to say that, honestly. Now we can see a scenario where many others can enter and say, I can also be part of it. I can also welcome, in the case of refugees, many of them and resettle them just because they cannot go back to their country. Sure. In the case of migration, very, having a common framework, framework where the human dignity, the centrality of a human person is always assured by the policies, is also telling us how movement can be make easier, but also producing a win-win-win situation where all the different stakeholders are actually gaining out of the process. Well, it's lovely to have you here in Melbourne, oh, it was Father Fabio. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Father. Fabio Baggio spoke at the Joe Greck Memorial Colloquium, and as you can tell from our chat over these past few minutes, very across the whole area and doing some wonderful work. So a safe trip home, and it's lovely to have you in Melbourne. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father Fabio.